To successfully navigate your ship as the captain, you must know the seven C's. Hello again, my fellow shipmates, and welcome back to Project Eli, where we educate, lead, and inspire. You know, a good ship's captain has extensive knowledge of the seven C's. A successful leader or coach has extensive knowledge of the seven C's. They are, in order, credibility, connection, clarity, commitment, culture, creativity, and celebration. As I mentor my son, I give you all permission to come aboard. Question, Eli. Are you excited about your life? Are you focused on a challenging vision that allows you and the people around you to make significant progress? Is that vision huge? Is it inspiring? Does it occupy your thoughts constantly? Does it put a smile on your face as you visualize the end result daily? Does it give your life juice and purpose? You the man. What I want to explore today is the facade of what some people believe is leadership. Because you know, Eli, leadership is everything. There is no forward movement without it. Unfortunately, we live in a world where politically correct rhetoric is substituted for real leadership. I'm speaking of the leaders, quote unquote, that use words like team play, achieve a common goal, respect, cooperation, communication, community, benevolence, and collaboration without a specific goal to strive for. That's not leadership. It's politically correct lip service. Their use of these words is akin to constructing a building without laying a solid foundation. These leaders are using politically correct rhetoric instead of building from the ground up. Using trendy leader speak will not get results until the proper foundation is laid in concrete. Let us now focus our attention on constructing the necessary foundation before we speak to politically, politically correct buzzwords. Without a foundation, there's only empty conversation. And before we proceed further, Eli, let's review the qualities of a successful coach. A good coach shares five common characteristics. Number one, care for the people they coach. Number two, observe their attitudes, behavior, and performance. Number three, align them with their strengths for peak performance. Number four, communicate and give feedback about their performance. And number five, help them to improve their lives and performance. Please keep these characteristics in your mind as we move forward. The foundation for all successful leadership is credibility. Honest, competent, forward, look forward looking, excuse me, inspiring. When you combine these characteristics together, they comprise leader credibility. The workforce must believe that their leader's word can be trusted, that he will do what he says and that he has the knowledge and skill to lead and that he is personally excited and enthusiastic about the direction where the organization is headed. Credibility is one of the most difficult and fragile attributes to earn. It's earned minute by minute, hour by hour, month by month, and year by year. Once it's discovered that the truth has been stretched or an out outright lie has been told, credibility is lost because of a lack of trust. Once a statement of policy has been declared and there is no follow-up, credibility is lost because of a lack of determination. Once a project is initiated without the stated objective being accomplished and then terminated after a minimal effort is made to accomplish set objectives, credibility is lost because of the lack of commitment. Without credibility, what you have is cemetery communication. Lots of people out there, but nobody's listening. Key point, Eli, 
the organization always models leadership without exception. Now the, the Achilles heel of many leaders credibility is their inability to admit that they made a mistake. While it's ideal to never err in public or private, it's also unrealistic. The road to success in business and life is not a straight paved highway. It's fraught with curves, potholes, and roadblocks. When a leader apologizes for an error, it gives the followers a chance to forgive and move forward. To forgive gives a person a good feeling inside. It's a bonding experience to forgive or to be forgiven. Too many leaders pretending to be faultless deny this bonding opportunity to their followers. Instead of creating goodwill and trust by admitting an error, they create distrust and animus. It's an opportunity lost. Now, once credibility is achieved, the next step is to create a connection. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, here's a quote from a book called The Leadership Challenge by James Cousas and Barry Posner. Quote, the difference between managers and leaders is the former honor stability, control through systems and procedures, and see passion and involvement as words not fit to pass without lips. Leaders thrive on change. They exercise quote-unquote control by means of a worthy and inspiring vision of what might be that has arrived at jointly with their people. Managers get people to do. Leaders get people to want to do. Once again, the Leadership Challenge by James Cousins and Barry Posner. The job of a leader is to create a vision. Every organization, every social movement, secular or non-secular, begins with a dream. The dream or vision is the force that invents the future and serves to connect the organization together. In some ways, leaders live their lives backwards. They're they have pictures in their mind's eye of what the results will look like before they start their projects, like a director making a movie. But visions seen only by leaders are insufficient to create an organized movement or a change in a company. A leader without followers is not a leader. People will not become followers until they accept a vision as their own. Commitment cannot be commanded. It must be inspired. The vision is the magnetic north that sets the compass. The leader is the evangelist for the dream. If a leader displays no passion for a cause, why should others? Leaders inspired the shared vision. They do that by showing how everyone will be served by the common purpose. To enlist people in a vision, leaders must know their followers and speak their language. People must believe that you understand their needs and have their interests at heart. Only through an intimate knowledge of their dreams, their hopes, their aspirations, their visions, and their values is the leader able to enlist their support. Those in the organization who must produce the results must feel a sense of ownership of the dream. Only then will they feel inspired and empowered to use their energies to produce extraordinary results. The vision must be described in rich detail so that the workforce will know how to help select the proper route for getting there. The vision needs management, electricity, and concrete to be an effective connector. When we speak the same language, we can accomplish much more. The leader must know what dreams, goals, and ambitions their people cherish. Rapport is the key to speaking the same language. Now here's an illustration that my aunt once told me. In the days of cloth diapers, the baby started to cry as the husband and wife were out to dinner. Mommy was extremely tired, and she asked Daddy to please change Junior. The husband, trying to get out of the job, said, I don't know how to change a baby. 
Being sure to speak to her spouse in language he would understand, the wife said, Look, Buster, you lay the diaper out like a diamond. You put second base on home plate. Put the baby's bottom on the pitcher's mound, hook up first and third, and slide home underneath. And if it starts to rain, the game ain't called. You start all over again. Connecting is the ability to identify with people and relate to them in a way that increases your influence with them. Here's some more help from the Leadership Challenge, James Kuzis and Barry Posner. People ask themselves these questions before they become connected. Number one, do you care for me? Number two, can you help me? Number three, can I trust you? Now step three is clarity. Very simply, clarity means giving clear, concise, definite direction. If you want to accomplish a specific task, do not assume that your thoughts are congruent with those to whom you have given the assignment. State what you want done and have those assigned the task restate the assignment back to you. This will eliminate ambiguities. In most cases, leave the how-to to the people to whom you've assigned the task. Typically, people will work more diligently on a game plan that they created than one that is given to them. It's okay to ask what their how-to is, but you seldom want to change it, or you've chosen the wrong people to complete the assignment. Minimal tweaking is okay. Remember, once you have established credibility as the leader, that means trust. And trust is a two-way street. When you use words like team play, respect, communication, and cooperation, there must be a clarity of purpose or the question will arise, exactly what am I to cooperate or communicate or provide team play for? Communication means building a bridge of common thought from one person to another person or a group of people. When we communicate, we must include, number one, thought, something we know. Number two, emotion, something we feel. Number three, action, something we do. Now, here's some red flags. Beware of the following communication connection breakdowns. Number one, something I know but do not feel. My communication is dispassionate. Number two, something I know but do not do. My communication is theoretical. Number three, something I feel but do not know. My communication is unfounded. Number four, something I feel but do not do. My communication is hypocritical. Number five, something I do but do not know. My communication is presumptuous. And number six, something I do but do not feel, my communication is mechanical. Now the next C, quote unquote, to be navigated is one of the most critical. There must be commitment from everyone. The key to commitment is to add value. Adding value is the antidote for temporary setbacks. It is the why that motivates the team to persist when challenges, potholes, and setbacks occur. Now, before you can add value to others, you must value others. Great leaders win over the hearts and minds of others. Get into their hearts and their heads will follow. It's not just about visualizing the dream, it's how the accomplishment of the goal adds value to lives in an impactful way. We're talking about how society will profit from the efforts of the team. Continually paint that picture, sing that chorus, preach that sermon, and fan that flame. Concurrent to adding value to the consumer, commitment rises exponentially when it is married to promotion by performance for the team. Promotion can be mercenary, that is, cash, or Promotion can be spiritual, that is, recognition. The point is, 
the more driving forces that you have in place, the stronger the commitment. The queen or king bee is constantly sharing the vision and selling the dream to create a buzz in the hive in as many ways as possible. See how many different senses you can use in this process. Motion creates emotions. People need to see progress. It's progress that drives someone to give that extra effort to achieve more. Have a scoreboard that is visible upon entering the work arena that grabs you immediately. The more people are attuned to the vision and the more focus there is on the vision, the more commitment you will inspire and receive. If possible, have team and individual statistics displayed. Winning and recognition as an individual or as part of a team creates momentum. Big Mo motivates and inspires. Above all else, be a good finder. Positive feedback replenishes the blood supply and is the energy drink that enables your team to run a three-minute mile. Without constant cheerleading and feedback, the workforce's mantra becomes, we, the uninformed, working for the inaccessible, are doing the impossible for the ungrateful. This mindset is prevalent in most of the organizations that merely use politically correct buzzwords without laying that solid concrete foundation. Without credibility, connection, clarity, and commitment, there is a total disconnect to the organization's blood flow. It's the difference between a living, growing, forward-moving environment and a hospice envi environment. Now, I've had the experience of spending considerable time in both a recovery medical facility and a hospice. <coughs> Excuse me. In the former, there is a culture of optimism and growth. In the latter, the culture is to provide maximum comfort before death. Now, doesn't it seem that many declining businesses place a higher emphasis on comfort by saying things like, that's the way it's always been done. That's not in the charter. We don't have the resources for that. Those are BS excuses, and BS is bologna sandwich. Then, and, and they're more interested in making excuses than finding solutions. Instead of saying, we can't do that, they should be asking, how can we do that? It's the difference between lip service leadership and mission-driven leadership. The culture of an organization is driven by its mission statement. Too many organizations just pay lip service to their mission statement. It's like a tombstone in a cemetery. The mission statement is unveiled, then we visit it once a year. The reason most mission statements miss their mark is because they're not turned into action, and the reason for this is that most missions do not provoke enough thought. A mission, by definition, is a religious quest, a doctrine to live and die by. We don't need weak mission statements. What we need is a destiny statement. It is what every individual should be thinking about on their way to and from the workplace. The destiny statement identifies a direction and a purpose. It is up to the chief executive to put a foot on the accelerator. There is no forward movement without a driver, a coach, a cheerleader, and a scorekeeper. Missions are determined. Destinies are predetermined. Any fate other than success is unacceptable. The super CEO wants to reinvent the game, not react to it. The destiny statement is sovereign. It is the Constitution and the Supreme Court. It is the blueprint we have chosen to add value. When the focus of the culture is the destiny statement, Everyone is of one mind. This one-mindedness one is what generates creativity. When everyone's focus is on one objective, making the dream a reality, new and better ways of accomplishing goals will result. Every advancement of humankind begins with laser focus on an objective created in the mind of man. 
most people think it's do, have, be. The truth is, it's be, do, have. The culture is right when we become emotionally engaged with our dream every day. Every morning, we must make it a practice to imagine the payoff, the benefit, the contribution, the art, and the actions of that thing that we do. This unity of thought, this singleness of purpose, impregnates the brain with creative ideas. Now, the final candle on our cake is celebration. Most people crave recognition. As you successfully accomplish each chunk of achievement of the vision, Take some time to express gratitude to the team in a public setting. Public recognition makes a person walk taller and with more confidence. Everyone likes to be shown appreciation with more than a pay stub. Let me illustrate this point by sharing some wisdom from a buddy of mine who's one of my co-workers. A couple of years ago, I heard my buddy sending his wife one of those edible, edible bouquets to celebrate Valentine's Day. He made sure that the provider had her correct business address and he was very specific about the time that he wanted his gift to be delivered. I overheard that it would cost him an extra $35 to have it delivered to the business at that exact time that he requested. When he put down the phone, I asked him, why didn't just pick up the bouquet at their shop and deliver it at home on Valentine's Day and use the $35 to go out and eat or get some other gift? His response was this. When she gets the gift, which is very large and very beautiful, it will draw the attention of all the people that work in her office. It's being sent at the precise time when most of her co-workers will be there to see it. There'll be all sorts of oohs and ahs from her co-workers. When I get home that night, I'm going to find that it's the best extra $35 that I've ever spent. Now, doesn't that story sound like a team builder to you, Eli? Celebrate victories and inspire. As a leader, Eli, always remember the six most important words, I admit that I was wrong. The five most important words, you did a great job. The four most important words, what do you think? The three most important words, could you please? The two most important words, thank you. The most important word, we. The least important word, I. Well, Eli, that's the wisdom of the seven C's. Make the vision your foundation and add value. Remember, being a leader is to be a prophet so that others may profit. Once again, I pay homage to Simon Sinek for his wisdom in inspiring today's content, as well as those authors that I have previously acknowledged. Next time we reassemble, our topic will be, are you Mr. Spock or Mr. Chekhov? Eli, my mission is to boldly go where no dad has gone before. To ensure you're aboard the Starship, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. You will find it enterprising. And don't forget to tell the Klingons if you feel that these videos successfully energize. If you're serious, do review the description box for some words to live by as a leader. Our thought for the day is from Dr. Martin Luther King. Faith is taking the first step without seeing the entire staircase. And because we never end a meeting on a philosophical note, get out there and charge. I'm Eli's dad.